So on Friday afternoon, I went and bought the high resolution astro imaging camera. And the model I have is the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. It's a cooled camera and the specifications on it are quite impressive. It's got a four thirds sensor, 11.7 megapixels, 4144 by 2822. Now that's higher resolution than 4K and also an incredibly wide exposure range of 32 microseconds that's faster than 1 30,000th of a second right up to 2000 seconds so it can hold the shutter open for more than half an hour and the results that you can get out of this camera when attached to a good telescope is nothing short of spectacular. And here's the camera fitted to an 80mm Skywatcher refractor. I was using this last night to do a lunar time lapse. And I have the telescope mounted on the Celestron AVX mount, which I also used for the Coronado Solar Scope on Saturday for a half day solar time lapse, which you'll see shortly. And the first time lapse was done with the Coronado Solar Telescope. It was done from local noon until sunset, and you'll see that progresses. I was taking one frame every 15 seconds, so the time lapse is quite smooth. Now you can see the surface detail on the sun, and that allows us to see that there is no field rotation, and I'll talk about that shortly. The second time lapse is a lunar time lapse done with the Skywatcher Refractor. Now that was done from about an hour before sunset until moonset. Now you'll see that I allowed the exposure to become too high when the sun set. And that means the illuminated part of the moon was severely overexposed. But that allowed us to see the unlit side of the moon very clearly. And importantly, it allowed us to see stars as well. Now you'll see as the time lapse progresses, that the rate of movement of the moon across the sky is quite different to the stars. I've had some flat earthers tell me that the stars and the moon move together. Now that's quite incorrect, which you will see in this video. So just touching on field rotation, this is what you're going to see if you're doing a time lapse of the sun, moon or stars with a camera mounted on a fixed tripod or on an alt azimuth tracking mount. And what that means is as you follow the object across the sky, it will appear to rotate in the image. Now, I'm using an equatorial mount that is correctly polar aligned for Sydney, Australia. And what the equatorial mount does is rotate in an equal and opposite direction to the rotation of the Earth. And that is why you get no field rotation during the time lapse. During the solar time lapse, which ran for several hours, there is no field rotation. And the lunar time lapse, which also went for several hours, you can see the orientation of the moon is not changing. Even though we had cloud for a period of time, the moon makes another appearance just before it sets, and you can see that there has been no field rotation there. So these two time lapses are really just practice with the new imaging camera because I'm planning to do an all-day solar time-lapse from sunrise to sunset and when the weather conditions are suitable an all-night lunar time-lapse from moonrise to moonset as well. Now just to summarize I'm using the Celestron AVX equatorial mount with both telescopes. It is correctly polar aligned for Sydney Australia 34 south latitude. The imaging camera is the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. The points to note as you watch the following time-lapse footage, we have no field rotation because we're using the equatorial mount. There is no change in size of the sun or the moon during the time-lapse. The moon does move at a different rate to the stars and the unlit side of the moon is still there. When the image is overexposed, you can see that part of the moon very clearly. Now if you're going to compare the size of the Sun during the early part of the solar time-lapse and right at the point where it sets, please remember to measure the Sun at the same angle 
that you see the horizon when the sun sets. Now, due to the camera position on the telescope and it being an equatorial mount, the horizon was not horizontal in the frame when the sun sets. So you need to be measuring the sun at its horizontal, which is about this line. And that will show you that there was no change in size from local noon, the beginning of the solar time lapse, to when the sun set. You will see some vertical flattening, which is normal due to refraction, but there is no change in size measured across the horizontal. So let's play the footage. <laughs> 